Today on Quitna, we have a very special request to talk about transitive trust. And this request comes from a very diligent student who I'm tutoring right now, so Sherry, I hope you get something out of it, and I hope you can trust me to transfer the knowledge. So before we talk about transitive trust itself, it's a good idea to understand the overall context and kind of where it hangs out in. So I'm gonna write a word on the board that you all know. Authentication is simply when you're proving that you are who you say you are, right? And there's a form of authentication that you probably know as well called single sign-on. And single sign-on is when you authenticate once and you access a whole bunch of different resources. So you've heard of things like Kerberos, right? But Kerberos is typically for our internal LAN, right? It's on our internal network. So I authenticate, then I can print to the printer. That's great. That's awesome, but it's time to grow up, right? We want to do single sign-on over the internet in the modern day. So when we do single sign-on across the internet, that's called a federation or a federated identity. So basically what happens, for example, CyberVista and Kaplan may be part of a federated single sign-on solution. So I can authenticate on the CyberVista site, but the authentication still carries across the internet and works on the Kaplan side and actually allows me to access resources on the Kaplan side, right? So I, I authenticated on one side, on the CyberVista side, who's in a federation with Kaplan, I can access their resources. Now, how does this federated identity actually work? How do we get the authentication tokens actually exchanged? Well, a very specific language called SAML, Security Assertion Markup Language, which is an XML-based language, but you don't have to know that. All you have to know is SAML is so cool and so important that I'm named after it, all right? Now, SAML, the language itself, supports or revolves around this idea called Transitive trust. So now that we know where transitive trust kind of hangs out, we can dive into it and look at some examples. This is not the upside down CIA triad. This is the transitive trust triangle. And it's a triangle because there's three actors we really want, we really want to be thinking about. So the first one kind of makes sense, the user. The user is just the person or the entity that actually wants to access a resource. Now, where do they want to access the resource from? The service provider. Makes sense, this is the actor that has some sort of service that the user wants to actually access. So the user could go up to the service provider and say, hey, I want to access your service. The service provider may not have the ability to actually authenticate that user or they don't trust the user. So what happens is service provider says, eh, I'm gonna send you to somebody who I do trust who could do that for me. That's the identity provider. So all the hard, work of you know authentication happens right here on the identity provider side. So what happens is the user says, okay, I want to send a request for authentication, right? The identity provider is going to respond and say, all right, well, let me make sure you can actually uh, be authenticated. Do you know like this password or, or something, for example? If the user is able to properly be authenticated, what happens is the identity provider sends back a authentication token which the user can then take and present to the service provider, okay? So here's where the fun part happens. The service provider will then, you know, sort of allow the user to access resources, but why? Not because they trust the user, but because they trust the token that the user has from where? That's right, the identity provider. So what happens here is the service provider and the identity provider have what we call a trusted relationship. So there's a trusted relationship between a service provider and the identity provider. Now, by transitive property, the service provider can trust the user. Why? Because the user was authenticated by the identity provider. Okay? So one more time, let's just wrap it all together. The user is not necessarily trusted by the service provider, but the user has been authenticated and trusted by the identity provider, right? And the identity provider and the service provider have a trusted relationship. So the identity provider says, oh yeah, this person is good, you're good to go. Service provider says, okay, I trust you, therefore I will trust the user. So that's how transitive trust happens on a single sign-on federated identity environment. To help us explain transitive trust, we have Allie. Welcome, Allie. Hi. And welcome, even though you're wearing a black dress behind the light board. I didn't know I was going to be doing this. I'm you sorry. You always assume every day you're going to be behind the light board. <laughs> anyway, what's up? 
So, um, I'm sorry to, to bug you. I was swiping, and yeah. I noticed that you're friends with uh, Brad. Yeah, Brad, Brad. Great guy. Why? What's yeah? up? Yeah? Okay, well, I mean, I was thinking about maybe going on a date with him. Oh, But I wasn't fun. sure. So, should I absolutely. swipe no, right? Absolutely. Swipe right. Swipe right. right, like, as far as you can. Brad <laughs> is a great guy. I trust him a lot. I think you have a fun All date right. with him. All right. Thanks. There you go. You see that? Transit of trust. So, Brad, in this case, would be the user. And he wants to go on a date with Allie, who here would be the service provider. Now, Allie doesn't know or trust Brad, but she knows and trusts somebody that knows Brad. That would be me, the identity provider. So, again, since this is a pre existing trusted relationship, that trust can be transitive and translated down to Brad. All right, thanks to Sherry, Allie, and Brad. That was transitive trust. You heard me mention the example when I was explaining federated identity between Kaplan and CyberVista. Well, CyberVista would be in a federation with Kaplan because we're actually a sister company of Kaplan. So we take a lot of their learning science best practices and inject it right into your course and your tutoring sessions and into these quitnets. So we will see you in a course, we will see you in a tutoring session, and we'll see you next week on Quitna.